In this video, we'll be discussing the concept of magnetic flux and flux linkage, which is a key physical quantity in the study of electromagnetic induction. This video is part of a series of videos on EM induction, and the material we'll be looking at is prerequisite knowledge you need to have for the second type of induction, what I've called flux changes in a loop. Consider a loop of wire placed in a horizontal plane. The loop encloses an area A, Imagine that the loop presides in a uniform magnetic field. As you can see, there are magnetic field lines that are sort of poking or piercing through the area. You have to imagine that there are field lines poking through all over the area. All the field lines are pointing in the same direction with constant magnetic flux density, B, since it's a uniform field. We can thus talk about the magnetic flux through the area. To work this out, we need to draw in a line perpendicular to the area, known as the normal to the area. Most of the time, it will be drawn in on a diagram when you need to calculate the magnetic flux. What's important is the angle, call it theta, between the normal and the direction of the magnetic field lines. This lets us work out the component of the magnetic flux density parallel to the normal, which is B cosine theta from trigonometry. The magnetic flux through the area is given by the product of this component and the area, B cosine theta times A. The symbol we use for magnetic flux is the Greek letter phi. Often you'll see capital phi used instead. The SI unit of magnetic flux is the Weber, which is abbreviated as WB. And from the definition of magnetic flux in terms of flux density and area, we can see that one Weber is equal to one Tesla meter squared. And from this, it also follows that one Tesla is equal to one Weber per square meter, which explains the name magnetic flux density, IB, the flux density is a magnetic flux per unit area. When theta is equal to zero, i.e. the field lines are parallel to the normal, the magnetic flux through the area is just equal to b times a, because cosine of zero is equal to one. When theta is equal to 30 degrees, the magnetic flux is equal to square root of three over two times b a. A special case is when theta is equal to 90 degrees, in which case the field lines are directed in the plane of the area, and so the flux through the area is equal to zero. In this case here, the magnetic field lines have zero component parallel to the normal. So cosine 90 is equal to zero, and that's why the flux is equal to zero here. What if the field lines point in the direction opposite to the normal? In that case, the angle between the field lines and the normal is 180 degrees. So the magnetic flux through the area is equal to minus BA, since cosine 180 is equal to minus one. So magnetic flux can be negative as well. And it's useful to see how the flux varies with angle in this graph. As you can see, we're just looking at a cosine shaped graph. Notice that the magnetic flux is negative when the angle theta is greater than 90 and less than 270 degrees, i.e. when the vertical component of the flux density is pointing in the direction opposite to the normal. Up till now, we've been considering the magnetic flux through a loop consisting of a single turn of wire. Often though, you'll be considering loops or coils consisting of more than one turn, in general, n turns of wire. Till now, we've been considering the special case of n equaling one, so it's just a single turn of wire. In the general case of n turns, we now have to talk about magnetic flux linkage, which is given by n, the number of turns, multiplied by the magnetic flux phi. So to calculate flux linkage, all you have to do is calculate the flux, magnetic flux as discussed previously, and then just multiply by n, the number of turns. Everything we said previously about magnetic flux holds true for flux linkage as well. So for example, the flux linkage can be negative, the flux linkage varies as a cosine graph with angle theta, and so on. So here's the graph of flux linkage and how it varies with theta. And note now that the maximum and minimum values of flux linkage are NBA and minus NBA, respectively. As we go on discussing induction in future videos, you'll see NBA 
and minus NBA crop up often in discussions of induction. The units of flux linkage are the Weber, but sometimes you'll see the funny looking Weber turns being used as the unit instead. So thanks for listening and watching. Please remember to like and share the video and to subscribe to the Forest Learn channel if you haven't already. And if you have any suggestions or questions, please leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Take care and I hope to see you soon.